Дорогие друзья, говорит с вами Роуэлд Хоффман, я профессор Американского университета в Корнелл, в штате Нью-Йорк, и я из еврейско-польского происхождения, родился в городе Золочив, недалеко от Львива, в западной, на западной Украине. I would like to talk to you, and now I switch to English, a little bit about Judaism and science. So, Jews are very well represented in science and in the medical profession, and one wonders about that. Why is that so? Now, it could be that, and this is what we have to get out of the way before we can talk about this, is that Scientists are smarter than other people, and uh, Jews are smarter than other people. Well, as for scientists being smarter than other people, there is no evidence in the personal lives of scientists or the way they conduct uh, their business that they're any smarter than other people. They may be better at math courses, but math is not all of life. And as for Jews being smarter than other people, I mean, it might be something that someone who's not Jewish believes, but you just send them to Israel and have them live there for a few years and ask them again about that. So why is it that there are more Jews in science? One is, I think, the tradition of learning, which was there in the times when the people were religious, and, and the way that that study was done, the Talmud, studied over 2,000 years, was in dialogue, in exchange of opinions, in a kind of balance of hypothetical and real cases, And that has very much of a resemblance to the way that science is done. So that people remember that in some way. They'd been studying that for millennia. There was a tradition of learning and support for it. I actually think there is a positive value then to assimilation. That is, as long as one was uh, isolated in their own community, one couldn't penetrate into science. But... If one is trying to enter a society, as Jews were, one society opened up to them in Europe and then in America, as they tried to enter society and they were on the outskirts sort of watching from the outside, that kind of watching and observation has a lot to do with the way that science is done. The interesting thing today is that it is the same for other groups, uh, as it was for the Jewish immigrants to the United States, so it is for the Chinese and Indian immigrants as well. There is something else which I don't think, again, my religious Jewish colleagues are going to be very happy with, why I think there are more Jews in science. I think in science, in some way, provides a substitute for religion. So, One is religious, and then one becomes non-religious, leaves this. And what one needs still is a spiritual center for one's life, something to, to hold on to, to value. And I think that in some ways, social concern, as seen, for instance, in the beginnings of socialism, which also attracted Jews, and the kind of all-encompassing concentration that science provides on getting reliable knowledge of this world, I think in some ways that was a form of religion for the people who took, who took it on. Now, there is one danger point here, and that is that we need the spiritual, no matter what we are. We can find it in nature, We can find it in trees and in music, but we need it desperately. And so my plea to you, to those of you who are going to go on to be scientists, is leave room for the poem by Pushkin, for the music of Tchaikovsky, or for the modern music of Schnittke. Those spiritual things are of immense value. They make you a better human being. The science you'll be good at, but leave a room for books, for music, for literature. It is that way that you become a whole human being. I send you my best regards. Limud is a wonderful, wonderful organization. Please stay with it.